Another common objection to the idea of a stateless society, a world without government, is the notion that, if not for a group of lawmakers telling the rest of us how to behave, we would all behave like stupid, irresponsible, violent animals. This claim implies one of two things, either we normal people have no idea what is right and wrong unless and until politicians tell us, or the only reason we want to do the right thing and coexist peacefully is because politicians command us to. A quick examination of your own motivations and behaviors proves that neither of those things is actually true. To argue that only government can make people behave in a civilized manner is particularly odd in a society where politicians are voted into power. If the people themselves have no moral code and no conscience and are just stupid, violent animals, why does almost everyone want government to keep the peace and protect the innocent? Would a population of vicious, heartless, evil people try to elect good people to keep the evil people in line? Obviously not. Human goodness and the desire for order and peace already come from the people, not from the lawmakers they vote into office. The same holds true of everything government does. If people are so short-sighted and selfish that they can't be trusted to voluntarily organize and fund whatever they deem important, then how can those same people be trusted to decide who should be in power? The implication is that the average person can't be trusted to run his own life, but can be trusted to choose someone to run everyone else's life. To argue that government is necessary for keeping society peaceful and civilized is to claim that normal people can't wait to commit evil, but also can't wait to vote for politicians who will forcibly stop them from committing evil. Contrary to what most of us were taught, government and politics are not a civilizing influence at all. Indeed, political authority is the arch enemy of peaceful coexistence. People who would never personally rob their neighbors themselves constantly vote for the government to do it for them. People who would never dream of trying to control every detail of their neighbors' lives think it's just fine to ask politicians to do exactly that. The game of politics constantly encourages people to use the violence of the state to rob and control other people, without any risk or feeling of guilt for the one who votes for that to happen. Government, rather than serving as a check against the imperfections of our nature, instead drastically amplifies our greed, resentment, irresponsibility and malice, by giving us a legal, risk-free way to forcibly interfere with the lives and choices of our fellow man. In short, politics brings out the bully and meddling busybody in everyone. In contrast, without a ruling class, people wouldn't be forever asking lawmakers to interfere with their neighbors' lives, and thugs and thieves wouldn't be able to deny responsibility for their evil deeds by saying they were just following orders. Throughout history, far more theft, assault, oppression, even murder has been committed by those acting on behalf of authority than by anybody else. Even basically good people, when they believe in government, condone things which they know would be wrong if they did them on their own. Most people know that theft and assault are bad, but they imagine that controlling their neighbors and forcing them to pay for things they don't want is perfectly fine when done by way of the political process. Wrong becomes right when it's called taxation, legislation, regulation, and war. Anarchists know better. They know that human society will never be perfect, but that it would be a whole lot better if evil deeds were committed only by genuinely nasty, sociopathic people, rather than being advocated and committed by many millions of basically good people who have been taught to believe that aggression is morally acceptable when it's called taxation, law enforcement, and national defense. Using yourself as an example, how many things have you voted to have government do to your neighbors that you know you would have no moral right to do to them yourself? The fundamental principle of voluntarism, a more specific term for anarchism, is very simple, it's wrong to initiate force against any other person, regardless of badges, laws or alleged authority. The only time the use of force is justified is to defend against aggression. The vast majority of people already understand this on a personal level, but they've been taught that this basic rule of social living does not apply when it comes to the game of politics and government. Without shame or guilt, everyone who votes asks the ruling class to do things to his neighbors which he knows would be wrong if he did them himself. Most people know how to get along and want a peaceful and just society. 
Giving up the belief in government doesn't suddenly turn someone into a violent animal, because our morality doesn't come from legislation, and our ability to organize and cooperate doesn't come from any ruling class. Our ability, right and desire to be productive, to help each other, to protect the innocent and to stop the wicked, does not come from government. In fact, it is threatened by government more than by anything else. Indeed, most injustice, oppression and strife, most of man's inhumanity to man, is a direct result of authoritarian political power. Contrary to what politicians pretend, ruling classes do not produce peaceful coexistence. Instead, they intentionally cause perpetual conflict and violence, exploiting our compassion, virtue and good intentions, turning them into wealth and power for the worst people in the world, while crushing the freedom and prosperity of everyone else. Of course, the people who benefit most from the political racket will do their best to convince you that it's a social necessity. But ask yourself this, have the thousands of laws, regulations and taxes imposed upon you made you a better, more productive and more caring person? Is the world better off with the politicians taking your money and telling you how to live your life? Or would things be better if you were allowed to spend your own money and make your own decisions? Is society really best served by a small class of people forcibly imposing a centralized master plan on everyone else? Can the orders and threats of a ruling class make the world what it should be? Or would society be better served by freedom, a respect for individual rights, voluntary cooperation and peaceful organization? If this second option sounds better to you, maybe you should learn more about anarchism and voluntarism. People are not perfect, and some are downright malicious and dangerous. And some people mistakenly view anarchism as a utopian idea that would only work if everyone were generous and compassionate. But if people are too stupid, greedy and malicious to be free, honorant they also too stupid, greedy and malicious to be trusted with power. If you don't trust some stranger to have control over his own life, why would you trust him to have control over yours? Whether people are inherently good, inherently bad, or some of each, giving a small group of people power and control over everyone else is never the answer. Many still insist, we need government because people can't be trusted, as if government is anything other than people, some of the worst people around, in fact. And many still believe that obedience to authority is what makes us civilized, when in reality, it does the opposite. Far more evil has been committed in the name of law and authority than has been committed in spite of it. The ultimate irony is that most people are still desperately hoping to achieve a fair, just, free and prosperous society by way of the very institution that has been responsible for more theft, thuggery, extortion, terrorism, torture and murder than all others combined, government. Everyone knows that governments can be corrupt, abusive, inefficient, counter-productive, even tyrannical. But most people still assume that, if only the right people were in charge, that would fix the problem. But over and over again, regardless of who was in power and regardless of the particular arrangement or structure of the political power, a democracy, a republic, a dictatorship, a collective, etc. history has demonstrated that power corrupts, and that freedom is far more conducive to peace and prosperity than any political solution ever has been, ever could be or ever will be. People have spent centuries trying to create a good society using different kinds of ruling classes, different kinds of legal structures, different ways of choosing rulers, and so on. But without exception, every authoritarian governmental construction has resulted in freedom and riches for a small few, and oppression, violence and poverty for others. What if, instead of deciding what the throne should look like and who should sit on it, all people of goodwill embraced the non-aggression principle? What if, instead of looking to a ruling class to forcibly impose our values onto society, we embraced the concept of self-ownership? In a nutshell, anarchists want you to have complete control over your choices, your money and your life. As long as you are not using force or fraud to inflict harm onto others, they want you to have absolute freedom. All they ask is that you treat them the same way. You own yourself. Your neighbor owns himself. Committing aggression is wrong. These principles are simple and obvious, to the point of being self-evident. 
and yet they are diametrically opposed to the authoritarian principles that most of us have been taught. At the end of the day, you need to choose which you want, peaceful coexistence among equals, anarchism, or authoritarian domination, with some ruling over everyone else, government. The two are mutually exclusive. Despite what would-be rulers want you to believe, anarchism does not mean chaos and violence, or every man for himself, and having no government doesn't mean having no morality, no organization and no cooperation. Simply put, anarchism means that no one is your master and that no one is your slave. And that's all it means. For a more thorough understanding of why a stateless society based upon voluntary cooperation and organization rather than based upon government force and authoritarian control is the only moral or rational choice, read the most dangerous superstition. If you pay attention to the mainstream media, Hollywood movies, or the usual political pundits, then hearing the word anarchist probably makes you think of a gang of mask-wearing, bomb-throwing punks, angry, violent vandals doing whatever they can do to destroy civilized society. And these days, those who wield political power are going to great lengths, making up stories, instigating conflicts, etc. to demonize and mischaracterize what anarchism really means. The purpose of this little video is to counter the spin and misconceptions. Regardless of your age, education level, income level, or views on culture or religion, don't be surprised if, after learning what anarchy actually means, you end up thinking, wait, that's exactly what I want.